Well, I think uh, in terms of the Anglican Church, the, uh, the issue of homosexuality is really an iceberg issue. And uh, while lots of people speak about the issue being just homosexuality, really what's underneath uh, the surface of the water is your view of the gospel and your view of uh, the scriptures and your view of salvation. Um, our understanding of the gospel is that God has sent Christ into the world to uh, die, to take away our sins, to rise again, to send the Spirit, uh, to give us repentance and faith so that we might be transformed and live a new life. And part of the transformation is uh, that through the forgiveness of our sins, God enables us to live a life where the whole direction of our life is towards pleasing him and not um, continuing in sin without repentance. So uh, all of us are sinful, all of us need forgiveness, um, and all of us can be very grateful to God for the gospel. Uh, and uh, heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, any kind of sexual, um, we all need forgiveness and we all need uh, God's goodness to help us with these things. So we haven't targeted any one particular sin. What we want to say is that if God is right and if the New Testament is right, then sin is an enormously serious thing. Uh, Jesus himself said in Mark 9 that anyone who causes the least of these ones to fall into sin, it would be better if a millstone were tied around his neck and he was thrown into the water, which is um, a fairly serious statement when you think about it. So that in Jesus' view, sin is uh, a serious thing and it's something we need to be saved from. Uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 6 lists a number of sins, uh, including uh, male homosexual conduct, uh, along with uh, idolatry and greed. Uh, and he says that if we continue in these things without repentance, uh, we mustn't deceive ourselves, but we will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So Paul says it doesn't matter what our sin is. Um, the, the Christian life is uh, one where we seek to grow and we seek to change and we seek to leave our sins behind. Now all of us sin all the time, every day, uh, but the Christian life is one about asking God for his help and transformation and his forgiveness again and again and again. So when a church uh, says, no, we're going to take one sin and we are going to say, actually, it's not sin anymore. Let's take the sin of, I don't know, idolatry. Let's say it's okay for us to worship idols. Uh, what we are doing is we are imperiling people's salvation by doing that. Um, so it doesn't matter what the sin is. To say that any sin is uh, privileged and is no longer sin, uh, what that does is it changes the basic structure of the gospel. And the gospel which begins with God's sovereign grace and finishes with us being with him. In the middle of the gospel is this call to repentance. If you, change, if you take repentance out of the gospel, you no longer have the biblical gospel. So that's why um, it's a big deal. I would say personally to uh, brothers and sisters who uh, are struggling with homosexual temptation or know themselves to um, uh, be active in this area, that there's hope and help in the gospel, that the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus are powerful, very powerful, and are able to save us out of this life. Um, God can save heterosexual, um, any sexual, as I said before, but it takes time and it takes truthfulness and it takes the integrity and honesty to bring our fallenness, our sinfulness and our brokenness before God and before his people and say, please help me. Um, saying, this is my thing, I'm going to define myself this way, you must accept me, you must affirm this life. That's not the Christian gospel. The Christian gospel is, I need, I need to affirm what God said.